Well, today was a rainy day and also the first day of potential frost here in Virginia. We're in zone 7B. And so yesterday, Dick and I took some time to winterize and take care of some of our garden that we hope to get us through the year. So follow me into the hoop house and I'll show you one of the things that we set up. Hello, fellow gardener friends. <laughs> I am standing underneath an Agrobon cloth tent that I've built for my tomatoes. Come see what else Dick and I did to frost proof our garden yesterday. We know that tonight is gonna to get into the 30s and it keeps changing as to how low it's gonna go. So we were not lackadaisical <laughs> when it came to winterizing uh, our crops. So one of the things we did was to protect these tomatoes here in the hoop house. And there we go. They've been here since last night in this extra protection that we have in our hoop house. And we'll, the true test will be, of course, when it does get below 32 and lower, but uh, we wanted to protect them just in case it did get below 32. You never know. Right now, I think it's going to be either 37 or 39 degrees tonight, but uh, we're uh, taking no chances. So stay tuned and see what else we did to protect our tender crops. This is going to be our last bean harvest for this season. So here goes. <laughs> size of that harvest. I think that is the most we've ever picked. And we just picked yesterday. So we are going to be eating ourselves some green beans. Got some cold temps coming. Right now it looks like it's going to be in 35 on Sunday night and Monday night. So we're getting ready to cover up some of the boxes that we have no protection on right now. Well, Dick, I'm kind of sorry to see those beans go. They were awesome. Yeah, these did uh, exceptionally well. First time growing pole beans. So this is a, it's a new task for us, clearing this thing off. Well, I guess we'll be, it's easier uh, when it's green. Clipped all the plants at the bottom. Did you by chance count how many we had? No, but I left your stems long enough for you to count yourself <laughs> if okay. you're interested. I am. I am interested to see. I uh, I forgot how many I planted. It would be nice to see how many germinated. Yeah. It seemed like it was giving off uh, quite a lot of beans. I thought beans. we had looked at earlier and thought that it was pretty much 100% germination. Yeah, it was very, very close. Yeah. Yeah. And I think all of them pretty much managed to make it. Yeah, I'm thinking if you, you know, don't clean off that wire and let it uh, dry on there, it might be harder. Yeah, probably so. I mean, it's just an old fence. Um, but, hey, it made a, made a reasonably decent enough trellis. Next year we'll do cattle panels. Yeah. Have a little more options. And, Get things going, but uh, still got some beans in there. Yeah. Hey, and besides that, we could really use the um, use those uh, plants for our compost. So. Oh yeah. So that's why we really need to do that. Yeah, and it's reasonably healthy stuff. Where the other beans? Three oh. so far. <laughs>
Here are my turnip greens that I'm growing inside the house under the lights. And I scalped them today. Got the bigger leaves off and kind of left some of the smaller ones to see if I can do a cut and cut again. Cut and come again. Yeah, cut and come again. <laughs> and so uh, they still seem perky after their haircut. But we thought, wouldn't it be great to have a turnip to go along with the turnip greens? So we're going to dig up one of these right now let's see here there we go got a hole in the netting so this guy right here he looks awesome yeah, it's not bad not bad huh yeah. yeah he should go well with your little turnip greens there yeah so we got a turnip to go the turnip greens so i'm looking forward to having that here really soon. It looked like uh, some snails got to some of these greens, uh, unfortunately. Towards the end here, for a while these were the most beautiful greens you could have imagined and uh, yeah, we have pests that we weren't aware of and so now we have to be more diligent about these guys. I don't know if these are the same pests that, you know, uh, chopped down my brassicas when they were babies. I know we've seen snails, and maybe snails can do the same thing. So we're still learning as to what uh, causes damage to some of our plants out here. But anyway, at least we have a really nice turnip for dinner tonight. What you got there? So, oak leaf. So this, th there was some oak leaf around the garden, so I blew them all into a pile, and I used our leaf vac right here, and I vacuumed them up into a pretty good sized pile. Um, they're mostly about this big. There's some remnants of it here. So then we chopped it up there. Sucked it through the leaf back once. Dumped it and sucked it through a second time. And look at it, how broken down that is. Oh, wow. Two times through the leaf back. So it's 10 to 1. Then I guess theoretically 10 to 1 again. <laughs> <laughs> So that's some good stuff there. Yeah, that's good stuff. What are your plans for it? I was just going to throw it on the compost pile over here. We had put our beans in here earlier. So that's got some, most of this is all beans underneath here. So, old bean plants. So I was going to throw that on there. Mm -hmm. um, it's broken down. So this stuff in here. This is stuff I ran through. Some of this got blown on top of it from falling leaves. But this is the stuff I put in there like last week, which only ran through it once. Mm -hmm. So obviously running it through it twice. Yeah, it's typical. Running it through it twice really, really makes a yeah. big difference. Yeah. Now normally you could run it over, run it over the lawnmower mm -hmm. um, if you had the attachment with your mower. Which I got a different, I got a newer mower than when I first bought this, so it doesn't fit. I might want that for my compost spinner. That's some pretty good stuff there. Some of this? Yeah. Yeah, I can, I'm going to put it in, I'm going to throw it in the wheelbarrow for awesome. you. Rather than just dumping it back on the ground. And I can take it over to your spinner. Sweet. That, is that good? That's good. All right. <laughs> We're getting ready for frost. So Dick is working on the leaves and I'm here working at the hoop house getting that bench pulled out from against the wall and then I'll be bringing in the agarbon cloth to cover them up in some way. I also have my okra plants on either side of those tomato plants. I don't know if I'll get any okra but hey they're trying so I want to give them a, a helping hand here. And I also am putting in plants that will go to the house. Here I have the two tomatoes that I just put into their pots. So they're small enough to come in. And these peppers 
I'm going to really whack them back and put them in smaller pots and see if they can winter, uh, winter things out inside the, our bathroom in our tub that we just don't use anymore. We have some grow lights and so we're going to see if we can keep these guys alive. I already have a, I think it's called a Big Jim Chili pepper plant in there that's doing really awesome, sprouting back its leaves, looking very healthy. So we'll be cutting these bell peppers back and then doing the same thing with them. So I'll show you that either in this video or in another upcoming video, we'll see. All right, well, this is what it looks like, our little uh, tent. <laughs> so we have our tomatoes. Not enclosed. sure what this is supposed to accomplish. Well, I think hold in some heat. Hold in some heat. And we uh, saw this idea on another YouTube channel, the Honey Tree Kids. They're not called the Honey Tree Kids, that's what we call them. <laughs> that's what we call them. <laughs> The honey tree farm or the something. Honey tree farm. <laughs> but anyway, they uh they add add protection to the tomatoes when it gets really cold. And so we're hoping that this will do the same thing for those frosty mornings and keep this the tomatoes happy. So we got some inside a tent and then some outside a tent. We'll see which ones work. There you go. These are really old ones. These are new from suckers that we thought we'd try yeah. to get a second season on. This one here, I don't know, he ain't got any fruit on. This one looks like he's got some flowers. And these are leftovers from the summer that we brought in here when we finished this thing. Yeah. These, these are the brassicas we yeah. salvaged from the cutworm attack. Yes, so they are safe and they yeah. should enjoy tomorrow. Yep. They'll be okay. Yeah, we uh, had the place locked up tight and it got to like 90 degrees and these guys started fainting on <laughs> They <us>. did. Because <laughs> we added uh, plastic to the door here. So see, we uh, added some uh, plastic. So we sealed this thing up, but we, but we haven't automated the vent yet. And we kind of let it go. Yeah. So we got the wiggle yeah, got wire. Up, yeah, like 90 degrees. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty tight. It's pretty tight. So. Yeah, I still got to automate the door, trim this plastic off. Although I was thinking that we might want to leave it on so I have something to pull on it next year when we go to put it back. Yeah. We already kind of screwed up up there and didn't, do, didn't leave enough. Um, but uh, that's okay. We got plenty of that plastic. Yeah, let's close up tight. Yeah, so that's, that's pretty tight. So we had some leftover wiggle wire from the job. So. All right, so. Looks like our. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, our yeah. cover crop's coming up. Look at this. So those little uh, Kadiak Brown mustard seeds just yep. took off and they, they, this is like number, day number four or something, four or five. Yeah, ain't that many days. Yeah. But they are doing a really good job. Yeah, they popped up in like two or yeah. three days. Yes. So they're supposed to be good for what, 27, 21 degrees? 26 degrees, I think. Okay. So this should give us um, five planting rows next for next year. Um, and we're gonna run a we're gonna run this fall cover crop probably run a spring cover crop with some kind of peas or beans or something to stick some nitrogen in the soil um, there used to be a raised bed garden all throughout here and uh, when we when we bought the place this was set up as a pretty nice homestead it had goats and chickens and the whole nine yards and we weren't ready for that mm -mm. so we kind of tore a lot of that out we knew we were gonna come back and redo it when we retired yeah. Well, we're tired now, so, <laughs> so now we're, surprise. Now we're